So here's a story that I've heard a lot of times in my life and I can identify with it. The storyline starts this way. I'm disillusioned. I can't believe it. It happened to me. What? A relationship gone sour. I never expected it. And sometimes people would say that I know relationships. Somebody told me once that I started a business. I've got 400 people working for me. I know people. I've been through everything you can imagine with those people. But I can't seem to make my relationship work in my private life. Publicly, publicly I'm flourishing. Or somebody might say, it's all my fault. I should have done more. I should have given more. I neglected this relationship. And at the end, usually open-ended, through the pain of this relationship, there's a new awakening in me, an awareness of the importance of relationships. But usually also about the complexity of the relationships that I live with. A lot of the teachings of Jesus was about relationships. And they seem to speak right into this situation and storyline. Today, three big things that Jesus said from the passage that we've read. First of all, relationships are important. Relationships require commitment. Relationships require practices. So first of all, relationships are important. Jesus said, take this most seriously. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. I mean this. And then he said, if two or three of you agree on something and you pray about it, my Father in heaven goes into action. If you gather in my name, you can be sure that I'll be there. Think about it for a moment. Jesus says that relationships have eternal consequences. That's important. And Jesus said there are certain types of relationships where certain things happen, where you will experience that God is with you and that God works in you and in your midst and things happen with you. So first of all, there are different types of relationships. So a relationship, is a, is a way of connecting, of being connected. If you connect with somebody, there's a bond, there's a space that comes into being. And what you think about and feel about and do in that space will determine what type of relationship it is. So we have names. Like, for instance, a working relationship. We even evaluate that space and say, it's a very professional, a good, healthy, is words that we might use, relationship that I live with. But there are romantic relationships, friendship relationships. Um, perhaps some of the dominant relationships in our culture is the working relationship, the romantic relationship, and the therapeutic relationship. We need different types of relationships. Some or other time, we get stuck in life. And usually, what you need is a relationship, a certain type of dynamic between you and another person, perhaps therapeutic in nature, so that you can get unstuck, grow, move on with your life. So say, yes, the first question, you know, are, are you aware of all the relationships in your life that you have? 
And are you aware of perhaps where you are stuck? What is the space and the type of relationship you need most right now to get unstuck and to move on with life? Now, all relationships are not the same. They're not equally important to you in your life. And you will get to situations where you've got to decide. And your decisions will be based on the priority of the relationships in your life. You have only have so much energy to spend. And um, it's, that's why you've got to decide what are the most important relationships in my life. And sometimes we might say something is very important to us, but in actual fact, it's not very important to us. Like, for instance, the family. But you might spend all your energy and time at work. You might think and feel the most important thing in my life is my family. That's only sentimentality. Uh, the fact is, where do you spend your energy? What occupies your mind, your feelings, your imagination the most? That's what's most important to you. Now, Jesus, in his first message, gave a huge challenge. Mark chapter 1 verse 15. And this is just a paraphrase. Jesus said, I've got good news for you. The time has come that you can live in a personal friendship relationship with God. And then he recommends and he says, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to revise your plans for living in the light of the fact that you can live this way now. Your life is a journey that you should travel with a deep consciousness, connection, relationship with God. In other words, Make your relationship with God the most important relationship in your life. That's how you should live. Now, through centuries, the church debated, so what's second? What's third? What's fourth? And we're not the same about it. You know, in the monastic tradition, the idea is that your relationship with fellow believers is the second most important relationship in your life. Above the relationship with your blood family or friends or work or anything else. In the evangelical world, we would say the second most important relationship is that with your life partner. The one you decided to spend the rest of your life with. And then your family and then perhaps your work of your friends, we differ. The interesting thing that Jesus said was, your relationship with your brother and your sister is very important. It was high up in the hierarchy of Jesus' teaching and thought. And, that, and this is what this passage is about. So we're not going to focus on that relationship. But the principles and the teaching of Jesus also pertain and apply to the other relationships in our lives. Unfortunately, in the culture, the time that we live in, we don't value this relationship all that much. For a lot of us, it's not important. Individualism is so strong that we say, I'll only get involved in relationships that are functionally, that helps me to get what I want. Jesus invites us to make this relationship with your brother and sister a very important relationship in your life. Now, the second big thing is that relationships requires commitment. Jesus said, if a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. Work it out between the two of you. If he listens, you've made a friend. If he won't listen, try again. So what's Jesus saying? Jesus is saying that your relationships requires work. If you have a good relationship today, it's not because you're lucky. It's not because you've, you've met the right person. It's because you've done the things that is necessary to clear the space and make the space between you and the other person life-giving, good, inspiring. Um, you've got to do things. But now, Jesus says, 
if he or she hurts you. It's going to happen. What do you do? Don't get out of that relationship. Make a commitment to stay in that relationship, to work through it. Why is it that if something goes wrong in a relationship, we immediately think, what's wrong with that person? He or she has changed so much. Um, perhaps I'm not meant for this relationship. I just want to move on. Now, Jesus challenges us to stay committed. Why? Because we can grow through it. Because a relationship will naturally move to that place where it stuck. And there's things that you can learn and must do. So the pain that you experience is not for nothing. It's an invitation to grow, to go to a better place. Now Scott Peck developed a model for relationships that uh, millions of people all over the world adhere to and find valuable. And here's his model. And, and just think if you can relate to it. First phase, he calls the Seidu phase. It's the honeymoon phase. It's the phase where you think um, everything is fantastic. Eventually, the right place, the right people. And... Um, we just connected. We just understand each other so well. You know. But everything, every honeymoon comes to an end. Some or other time. And in every relationship, there's a honeymoon phase where it just works out. And usually it happens when something happens that puts you into chaos. And this is his second phase. It's messy. I can't understand what's going on. I don't know what happened. I don't, and I've got no control over it. And now the biggest invitation is to stay committed during the chaotic phase. There's, of course, other stuff that you also should do in that phase, to work through that phase, so that you can come to the next phase, emptiness. If you sit... In other words, if you empty yourself, think about Jesus, Philippians 2, he emptied himself. If, if I become open, listen to you, so that I can understand better, so that I can feel you, so that I can accept you, that's the emptiness phase. You can move into community, a new connection. And some of you that worked through relationships that were damaged, I think would be able to relate to these phases. Um, the old relationship, you might have given up on it. Think that there's nothing that can repair. The pain is so big, but it has all changed. Now it is better, it's different. It's deeper. It's like honeymoon. It's over. But I, uh, and sometimes I might even long to that phase, to the excitement, to the dynamic of that phase. But I've got something much more real, deeper, life-giving to me than what I've had during that period. So it's important. This model um, can help you to understand that nothing's wrong when things go wrong. Um, it's normal for a relationship to go into that place. But then there's the work to be done. And if you do that work, you can go to a place where you experience something wonderful. Do the work. So the third thing that Jesus said is that relationships requires practices. Jesus said, go, tell, take, try again. Start over. It's a definite procedure, a practice, things to follow and to do so that you can experience this new relationship. So in the teaching of the Jesus, 
there's three things that you would observe. First of all, he gives us a what, he gives us a why, and he gives us a how. That is the transformation triangle. And you cannot do it with just knowledge. What should I do? Uh, you know, the fact that you know what's happening with you or what's going on will not change you or the situation. You still need to do certain things. And then, of course, there's the how that will give you understanding and insight. That will give you the motivation to stick through the difficult parts and to keep on trying and doing it. But you've got to find a how. What do I actually do? There are a lot of practices that we should follow Jesus in with. So here's one of the practices. And let's just unpack a few important aspects of this practice. Initiative. Jesus said, go. Um... We can say, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. Go. Uh, you can say, it's not my personality. Uh, uh, I'm an introvert. I don't like confrontation. I don't like trouble. Go. Uh, you can say, I know that person. He's not going to respond um, favorably. Go. I don't want to hurt that person. I rather... Ignore it and go, no, go. And go to him, second important, in private. <laughs> to him personally or her. Don't go to your friends, first of all. Tell them. We call that gossip. You won't believe what happened. I'm telling it very privately, just for yours. Uh, let's keep it between us, please. No. Uh, even don't do it very spiritually. I'm asking you to pray, please. And to do it intelligently. I've got to tell you what to do. Now, I have no bitterness. I've forgiven the other person. But this is what happened. No. Go to that person in private. And then speak to that person. You know, you... you Tell him the truth. Tell him how you feel and think what happened and why and what it did to you. Now, Paul says you've got to do it in love. We've got to learn what to talk about, but also how to talk about it. And it's a journey for life. You can never do it perfectly or, or really very good. You've got to keep on learning how to do it, but speak to that person And then Jesus said, if it doesn't work, don't quit. Ask somebody else to come with you. Now, first of all, don't quit. Three times. Jesus said, go. Go again. Go. Be committed to the relationship. And then, if you are stuck, ask the person that you have a problem with, If we can invite somebody else into this space, somebody that I'm comfortable with, that you are comfortable with, to accompany us into figuring out what's going on and how we can move through the chaos and the pain that we are in. It was just here where a lot of guys say no. I remember... When my wife asked me to go with her to see a therapist, I said, no, I haven't got the problem. You've got the problem. I really recommend you should go and see somebody else. I, I realized it's, it was just pride that kept me from going. Luckily, I swallowed my pride. And I'm so glad I did. It saved our relationship. And um, it, it, it's so important for us to, 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 to really be open and have the courage to do the things that are necessary to fight for your relationship and to heal it. But Jesus said, 
If it doesn't work out, let it go. Start over again. Some of us can't let go. Sometimes it's over. The damage, the pain, everything that happened is so big that you should just let it go. Uh, some of us quit far too quickly and easily. Now the people living closest to you will let you know who you are. If everybody, all your friends, all the people that love you and know you, tell you, you've got to let it go, perhaps it's time for you to let it go. So, here's the invitation. If you want to follow Jesus, put relationships in the center of your life. Become a relationist, not an individualist that usually only have functional relationships. I'm only in this relationship for what I can get out of it. No, a lot of relationships are not of that nature. And then perhaps you're at a place where you just want to find your space. That relationship, that connection that you need to move on in life. Perhaps you're in a place you sit with a lot of pain because of a relationship gone sour. You might be in chaos now. And, and, and you don't know what to do. Perhaps you need to invite somebody into a company to help. Perhaps it's time that you go, that you see in private, that you give the energy, that you care enough to talk and to stay in that uncomfortable place so that healing can come, so that you might find that the Father in heaven will act on your behalf, that he will be with you and that he will bring and change that space for you to experience life and energy again. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the life that you've given us. Thank you that most of this life comes to us through the connections of relationships that we live in. Help us to become aware of how important it is with who we commit to and decide to spend our lives with. Help us to be committed to these relationships, to do the hard work of getting along with each other. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, you're welcome to follow us on the formation journey in the mornings. Uh, if you're interested in just going deeper and journeying with this whole theme of relationships in the Matthew 18 path. If you haven't given to this ministry and to the work of God yet and you would like to, you are welcome to do so and the means would appear on the screen now. May the love of the Father, the grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. Amen.